Hey guys, it's Lizzie. So this is going to be a super chill sit down video one take where I'm going to be my actual personality and talk about my entire Lent experience. This was my first ever Lent as a Catholic. Yes, last year I was going through Lent when I was in RCIA, but I genuinely didn't understand it at all. And this Lent, I gave up so many things and then added on so many different spiritual things as well. And this has been the most amazing time in my life and the most flourishing, growing intellectually, close to God. I have been in years and it's been so amazing feeling like sprinting ahead in my faith. Excited to share with you everything I learned about sin and temptation, sacrifice, fasting, prayer, the saints. It's been the most life-giving, flourishing experience. I was so confused and skeptical two months ago about the idea of making yourself uncomfortable, giving up things, trying to relate more or unite sufferings to Christ. And I remember in NorCal at the Relentless Conference having long conversations with the other speakers about the concept of Lent and just disagreeing and questioning and trying to understand it. But after doing all of these intense things for Lent, I finally experienced what I was trying to understand. First, a message from our sponsors. If you want my earrings, they're from a company called Anna Luisa Jewelry and you can use my coupon code Lizzie10 to get $10 off any piece of jewelry. So also, Sock Religious is a company I worked with last summer. They make Catholic socks. So we have Mary, St. Teresa de la Sh I'm so bad at French, Le Sue. Joseph and Jesus, the keys of the kingdom of heaven, Mother Teresa, etc. If you want to buy them, you can use my coupon code Lizzie20 for 20% off. And we're also doing a giveaway on my Instagram. So go follow my Instagram. It'll be one of my recent photos. 10 more seconds and we'll get into the video. So I'm going to be in NorCal in two weeks speaking at this church. So if you live in the area, come out, hear me speak. I would love to meet you guys. I went into Lent full of ideas and fuel and passion because of hearing about Exodus 90, which if you don't know, Exodus 90 is this Lent on hard mode for guys. And instead of 40 days, it's 90 days with tons of devotional activities, workout, cold showers, extra Bible study confession. So many things are happening. And so actually at my boyfriend's church, some of his friends were doing Exodus 90, attempting Exodus 90. And it totally inspired me to do so much for Lent and make this the experience. So this is a list of everything I did for Lent. So starting off really basic surfacey, I took off my nails. I always wear really long gel acrylic, sometimes just my natural nails. They grow so long. I have really bright polish on them. And it's honestly a big part of my image. It gives me confidence. I love in live streams and editing videos having really good nails. And so giving that up and just having to be bare was a good Lent thing. The second thing is I was only allowed to wear my Catholic miraculous metal necklace. And so I wore this every single day of Lent and then Holy Week, I switched to the intense version. I care a lot about appearance and I match up my jewelry to my outfit and change up from silver to gold. So these two things, although they're small, it's every single day, it's my image. The next thing was making myself uncomfortable. So a lot of people give up social media for Lent, but I have the opposite problem where I'm very introverted about social media. I kind of like just working by myself. It's really uncomfortable for me to constantly be posting and a lot of you might think that's hard to believe because I'm always posting YouTube videos but the difference is that I film once a week and so every day I don't have to be on and character and social media. You guys actually requested in a live stream that for Lent 
I should live stream every single week which I did sometimes even more than once a week so thank you guys for requesting and motivating me and I actually took it a step further and I did an hour every day of social media in which I had to do any of the following post on my Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, story, make a video, film what I'm doing, post on my Facebook, Twitter, and specifically I read and responded to so many personal messages. It was hard. It was so uncomfortable to be every single day putting myself out there and connecting, but I actually found my YouTube soul again and I fell in love with this and I felt so connected and in touch and knowing your guys' souls and what you need me to upload. The next thing I did is having to spend 10 hours minimum at my parish every single week. I wanted to go to mass three to four times a week but we honestly have so many extra Bible studies, retreats, rosary, prayer, things at my church that I thought that I would just do 10 hours count up. I was really sacrificing all of my free time, a lot of my social life, my entire social life was my parish. I fell in love with my parish all over again. I got so close to different people. I got to know people at other masses. For the first time, I got involved in my church. So I started doing scripture reading so many times. I was Eucharistic minister at my mass. I was greeting people. We started a whole like welcoming ministry for Easter. We had a whole welcome tent. So I was on planning committees for Easter. So I would be at my parish for a couple hours every week for planning, doing administrative type stuff. So I was just at my parish all the time, volunteering. And I mean it, my entire social life, the past 40 days was my parish, except for when I was in Ireland. Then my entire, entire life was with that parish community. The entire time I was awake was ministry, 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 mass, impromptu rosary, divine chaplet, so many Christian talks to high school students, adults. It was intensive. In my parish this Lent, we grew so much closer because so many of the regulars got so involved in the welcoming ministry and so I got to know people who I hadn't talked to at mass yet. And now I'm on friendly terms and I know the names of so many new people. And whenever I'm at mass, I recognize like everyone and I feel so belonging and at home. And this past Holy Week, I was at my parish every single day except Wednesday. I just couldn't do it on Wednesday. I was so physically exhausted and needed to do YouTube. But something like 30 hours I spent at my church doing Eucharistic adoration, Bible study prayer, preparing for mass, greeting at mass. It felt like growing up when you're at a youth retreat or a campus ministry retreat and your whole life is spiritual, 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 so many events surrounded and immersed in it. That's what this past week was and also what Ireland was like and I think Ireland since I was spending all my time with a priest It really really motivated me to just be even more intense about my Lent So once I got back from Ireland then I had two more weeks of Lent and I was just Addicted and drawn to be at my parish to be around my priest as much as possible in addition I stopped listening to as much secular music as I normally do and I did it at all completely quick because I always have stuff on in the background but in the morning when I was getting ready doing my makeup instead of listening to Ariana Grande or Little Mix I had to listen to the radio so I listened to NPR EWTN recently relevant radio or I had to listen to Christian music I listened to a lot of childhood music Barlow Girl Girl, Brit Nicole that developed me spiritually throughout my teenage years so I felt so connected to my younger self it was the sweetest thing I deleted my Netflix not that I really used it that much and instead I watched a ton of the word on fire app so I watched Bishop Barron Patrick Coffin show Taylor Marshall I would just listen to hours long Catholic talks rather than having a music or random YouTube thing in the background. Randomly, I did get really obsessed with Little Mix live performances and 
vegan YouTubers during Lent just by chance I wasn't allowed to be on my normal parts of YouTube so then I ended up in concerts and vegan YouTubers reacting to why I'm no longer vegan videos from X vegan <laughs> so it was really cool I rediscovered things I would not have discovered if I was just watching my normal content the next thing is I dealt with things I was really scared of and had been putting off. I'm really, really sensitive to violence. And so during Lent, I dealt with really evil things that I should be educated on, but that I was so scared of opening up that part of my empathy and just feeling. I went to Virtus, I actually completed it. That's the Protecting God's Children class in Catholicism. I actually signed up for it on Ash Wednesday. My boyfriend came with me, so that really helped feeling like I wasn't alone and I completed the entire class. Of course, I cried during it, it was really hard, but I learned all about sexual assault of children, catching sexual predators, I took notes, I ingrained it. It turned out to be a really incredible group of people. It was maybe 30 people. Everyone was so emotionally raw about their own experiences of sexual assault or people they've known in their life. And it was so painful and awful, but I dealt with it and I need to deal with it to help other people. Another thing I dealt with is I finally finished reading this book. It's called The Locus Effect by Gary Hagen. I got this book for Christmas when I was in severe depression and so I knew I just couldn't handle reading it. It talks about sexual violence, so many different types of slavery and torture and oppression going on in the world. And this is my absolute favorite nonprofit in the world. I donated to it so much when I was younger. It's I've met the founder of this. Injustices in the world and modern day slavery is what I'm most passionate about, but I was so scared to deal with the actual stories. So I dealt with it during Lent and it was really, really hard, but it was good. Another thing I did is I watched the unplanned movie, which was about abortion. And it was really, really, really hard to watch as well. So many help back tears, but I feel like it was such a positive thing that I brought myself in that darkness and that pain and understood it. And I feel like I'm growing a tolerance and able to almost not detach myself, but view things without internalizing them in such a violent, empathetic way. Because I watched this movie, Pope John Paul II, this three hour video on his childhood up until he was elected Pope. And it was all about the Holocaust and World War II and Germany's invasion and occupation of Poland, so the Nazis in Poland. And it was the most violent, horrific video, but so amazing the emotions conveyed. And I remember watching it and I was like, why do I not remember any of this from school? And it's because I was so horrified of violence that I just could not process it, that I blocked all of it out of my mind. And I never skipped classes in college, but I skipped so much of my Humanities 3, which was the 20th century, because I just could not handle learning about the Holocaust and war. And so because I did the Virtus and the modern day slavery and the unplanned abortion, I was able to watch this really intense, emotional evoking movie about the Nazis in Poland and Catholicism and all these people dying. But I feel like I know so much about our history and the Catholic Church. I made a whole video about the term HSP, highly sensitive persons. So I'll link that here and below. If you relate to me, you might relate to HSP as well. And I think that Lent just helped me to feel again and become more human and just more emotionally involved with the world, which is so hard for me because a lot of my personality is kind of medicated away and I've just come to associate emotions with a manic high. And so I just disregard emotions and I don't care about emotions and I don't trust emotions and I only want what is constant and true and just objectively logic real. I'm just so scared to become immersed in this murky, mess of emotions when I don't know what is real. So forcing myself to interact with you guys so much, read so many messages of really dark things. That's another reason why it's so hard for me to 
do social media so much because so many people are struggling with these horrible situations of mental illness and suicide ideation and all of these things and so it's really really hard to just immerse myself in that and deal with it i was always so confused i thought catholics wanted to suffer just to suffer to relate to christ but i found that there are so many people suffering in the world right now who need love and healing and support they need to feel known they need to be understood we need to reach out to them correct these global injustices and evils so i made myself raw and open and soft and it completely changed me i feel so in line with my core and my identity but an even more intense and advanced version of myself also i did daily bible study more daily prayer than i usually do and i went to confession every week or every other week so i ended up going usually every other week and then i think once i went back to back but how I understand sin, it's insane. I just had so many epiphanies and I'm so in touch with every single thought and pull and impulse. And I have a video edited I'm gonna upload this week talking about temptation and how to fight temptation and my experience with it because I just became so self-aware in a way I've never been in my life. And going to regular confession and forcing myself to think through my life and my thoughts and my attitudes and my hidden intentions, I just feel so spiritually alive. And it's crazy how analyzing everything you're doing wrong, trying to have this constant pure perspective, not just actions, but thoughts, tiny intentions, that awareness and that dying to self in confession makes you the most spiritually alive, vibrant, passionate, also the most amazing thing that's ever happened in my Catholic journey. So I believed in veneration of the saints, fellowship of the saints, back in 2017. It was one of the first concepts I saw in scripture, in church history, and I was so excited when I learned this and began to learn about different saints and the idea of interacting with them and all of this. But I never intensely prayed for intervention for specific things until this Lent. And I was kind of forced into by circumstances which I'm so grateful that I was put in desperate times and so worried and stressed. I can't get into details because this is people in my personal life but I needed this thing for this person that I've been praying for for months and hours and hours and it was like no 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 and it was terrifying and this may sound really really dramatic but if you knew all the details you would be you would understand me i wish i could just implant my emotions from that situation into you to realize how intense it was like i was telling god get rid of my entire career and my youtube and all of this just for this one thing one day i just start intensely asking for intercession of certain saints and i ask for a specific time of day and date and then it happened and i remember just sobbing and sobbing and crying and feeling so grateful and not even knowing how to thank god and to thank all these people and for the first time it wasn't just head knowledge of how we're connected to the saints but i experienced it and i think this is how we'll feel in heaven, when we see Jesus in person, when we've known this our whole lives and we've felt positive emotions about it and we've loved God, but then you see and you experience and it's real. And that's how I felt about the whole concept of the fellowship of the saints and them being able to pray for us and then being part of us on earth. I just felt like it's real, it's alive. And I felt so loved by these people who I read about and such a huge part of my spiritual life and my conversion journey. But they were just names and historical people and so high above me. And then to 
have this like emotional experience where they knew exactly what I needed and my emotions and my name. That day was just so similar to this experience I had in 2017 where I believed in real presence and I saw it in scripture. Like I'd read different church history things about it, but then I read John 6 and I saw. It's kind of like that same thing, but two years later. And then I kept doing it and it was just such specific things, like so intensely specific and not a coincidence at all, just not a chance. I think what I really, really love about Catholicism is that God is really, really patient and Catholics are patient and you can go slow with experiencing and delving into different parts of Catholicism. It's like a billion dollar bank account and you can take whatever you want and learn in your time. I've always loved prayer and seen prayers in art form and as letters and music. I just, prayer is such an integral part of my entire life, but it's just oceans and oceans of depth of more prayer. And at Easter Vigil, three of my friends came into the church and were confirmed. And like two weeks before, they had former marriages that weren't going through, that were not, not divorces, but marriages that were not in the church. And so they were gonna be not able to be confirmed for a while. And then I prayed and prayed and prayed an intervention of people and then clicked like a few days later, everything was fine. They were being confirmed and just, that's an example that you might be like, oh, it's a coincidence. As my priest said though in a homily recently, he said nothing is a coincidence and he didn't mean literally nothing, but we just become an inside joke with my friends from my marriage where like tiny things happen and we're like, nothing's a coincidence. I forgot to add this. Also Stations of the Cross. I went to Stations of the Cross Originally, I was supposed to go every week, but then I was traveling and so I think I went three or four of the times and it was my first ever experience doing Stations of the Cross. I absolutely loved. I thought it would be the most horrific focusing on Jesus torture experience. I went in emotionally prepared to be crying the whole time. But instead, it was just everyone praying together. It was the most beautiful liturgy. If you haven't experienced it, even if you're not Catholic, you have to go sometime. Because my absolute favorite thing in the world is praying out loud with other people. And we were reading all these Bible verses together and praying together at each station. It was a group prayer event and tons of scripture reading. I've never read that much scripture from so many different parts of the Bible all at once ever. So that was really, really special. And also I prayed the Divine Mercy Chaplet for the first time in Ireland. They were really obsessed with it. So that was my Lent 2019. And I'm so, so excited for the rest of my life, coming up with so many new things to do for Lent to challenge and direct and level up my spiritual life. I love you guys so much and I will see you in my next video. Video. Bye. I'm alive.